Hi, so welcome to our short video on the flipped classroom. We have no disclosures. These are my three objectives for this video. First, I want to provide a rationale for using a flipped classroom. Then I'll define it. And also, we'll discuss some ways you can flip your classroom. Let's start with the rationale, because really it's problems with the traditional lecture-based curriculum that provide the best rationale for the flipped classroom. So before we think about the flipped classroom, let's think about a regular classroom, right? Most of us do lectures. So here's a typical lecturer, blah, 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 blah. Lots of very important information. And here are the students. So, you know, the students might pay attention at first, 10, 20 minutes, but then their attention might drift away. Have you ever sat in the back of the classroom? Well, trust me. This one's going to be on Facebook. This one's tweeting. Another is literally shopping, find some sales somewhere. And really, some are just being quite like much more honest about things and are just flat out falling asleep. So there's a fairly good chance that even if you're a decent lecturer, most students are, their attention is not going to pick up until about five minutes until the end of your talk. Not ideal. If the lecture has been recorded, they'll probably have to go home and watch it. Now, I've just painted a picture of the students who are actually in the classroom, but let's face it, in most medical schools, attendance is pretty abysmal. Maybe only half the students, at best, might be present at any given lecture. Over half the students might be home asleep, not asleep, and will watch your riveting lecture recording later in the day. Now, I recognize that this depiction probably isn't too fair to those of us who are excellent lecturers. I'm awesome. No, I'm just kidding. But essentially, the truth is that excellent lecturers are fairly rare commodities. Someone can be at the top of their field, but that doesn't mean they're actually a good lecturer. Some people read their slides, and that is boring beyond belief. Some are totally disorganized. Some might talk really fast, some way too slow, and some might actually have good slides, but the fonts are so small, no one can even read them. So what's the point? So in addition to making the point that it's difficult to find excellent lecturers, there are other good reasons for using a flipped classroom. In lectures, people can't pay attention. The learning's really passive, if people even show up. And then there are all sorts of problems with lectures themselves, delivery, organization, the slides. So now let's talk about what a flipped classroom really is. The flipped classroom is a really simple concept, and this is your typical model. Though first I'm going to start by describing the traditional classroom. The student comes to class and learns the facts in lecture. That's where he hears them for the first time. They are delivered by a lecturer and received by the student. The student then goes home, studies. He or she might figure out how to apply his or her knowledge to patient care. And maybe this will happen studying with peers, but surely will happen on an exam and eventually on the wards. In a flipped classroom, these learning events are shifted. The student first learns the facts at home on his own time. He then goes to class prepared with knowledge. Usually in the flipped classroom, this knowledge is tested either prior to or at the start of class. The students will then participate in an activity in the classroom where they must apply and integrate the facts that they've learned. Usually this activity is led by an expert or a facilitator. As you can imagine, the flipped classroom approach is more student-centric and less instructor-centric. The student has more control over the pace and more responsibility for the learning process. In this approach, students are required to come to class and come prepared. And because the in-class application activity is led by an expert, there may be a better understanding and assimilation of the material. So I argue that the flipped classroom model has the potential to be more effective and more efficient and result in better long-term retention of the material. So now we'll talk about some ways you can flip your classroom. Things should be divided up into the pre-class component and the in-class component. And before I said, I think that you should have a very 
loose definition of what the flipped classroom is because there's so many different methods you can use to flip your classroom. So there are many options. Um, in terms of your pre-class assignments, so the facts that you want to deliver your student, what you want them to learn and study, you have a lot of options. You could assign some textbook chapters, some review articles, assign a, a slide set you've previously developed or some syllabus materials that you have already developed for your course. Even perhaps show a lecture recording that was recorded a previous year. You could be more ambitious and make a Khan Academy or other um, style homemade video. And then there are a lot of resources that are already available. There are online interactive learning modules. Um, there may be other videos that have already been produced that you can use. Different academies might actually have learning modules on specific topics. Really, it depends what you want to teach, and that will dictate what you'll assign the students to study at home. As for what you decide to do in the classroom, you have a lot of options here as well. Two methods that are being explored at many schools are team-based learning, or TBL, and just-in-time teaching, or JIT. Both of these methods, they require readiness assurance because there'll be a short quiz, or quote-unquote readiness assurance test, administered prior to or at the beginning of class. That's to make sure the students are prepared. They also involve working together in structured teams, like in TBL, or in unstructured groups of students, like in JIT. In case you're not familiar with JIT, it essentially involves asking the students a question using ARS, and then if only, let's say, about 30 to 80% of the students answer correctly, asking them to find students who chose a different answer than they did, and then debate the correct answer. You then re-poll the students, and almost always, they do better. Now, if on the initial poll everyone gets the answer right, you can just move on or ask a more difficult question. And if too few get it right, you can back up and do some teaching. But you know, you can still flip your classroom just by simply questioning the students individually using ARS. You can go through several clinical vignettes and make the whole class time interactive in that way. So you don't have to employ peer-based teaching if you don't want to. In some situations, you might be fortunate enough to be able to use a simulation center. Oh, and I almost forgot. You can ask the students questions and then just have them simply pair and share. You don't even need to use ARS. So what I'd like you to take home here is, is that although you could use things like TBL or JIT to flip your classroom, you don't have to. You have a lot of flexibility. So here are some key points to this video. There are many problems related to solely lecture-based curricula. The flipped classroom requires preparation, operationalizes the facts for the students, and ultimately may result in a better learning experience. Instructors need to know that there are really a wide variety of options for both the pre-class delivery of facts and the in-class application exercises. Stay tuned for a short readiness assurance test.